A Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening, folks. And thank you for tuning in with me once again to another edition of True Conservative Radio. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. I want to extend my apologies to those of you that were expecting shows the past couple of days. Unfortunately, uh, the last show we conducted on the Blog Talk Radio Network completely uh, annihilated uh, my voice, and unfortunately, that just completely prohibited me from conducting a broadcast here on the the network, and I wanted to extend my apologies for those of you who messaged me up, who uh, messaged me on Twitter, uh, emailed me, the whole nine yards, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I get a lot of, I get passionate, I get, I get a lot of fury, just it, it just it, it it just combust with inside of me, and unfortunately, uh, I got a little carried away that particular program, and I wanted to extend my apologies for those of you that wanted to hear a program. Uh, but folks, my voice may crackle in and out. Uh, you know, uh, I, we're just kind of ad libbing this program. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, like I said, folks, uh, you know, my voice may go out, it may or may not, but I feel that it's important that I come up on here once again to conduct a conservative commentary. And uh, I know that uh, people that are looking at the title of the program this evening are probably rolling their eyes to the back of their head, looking at the infamous name that we all know as Octomom. That's right, Octomom here. Uh What's unfortunate, folks, is I hate to continuously dwell on this ridiculous, philanderous, genetic freak show. Uh, you know what? I don't even know if she's philanderous, but she's definitely a genetic freak show. We know that she goes to some mad scientist to have some turkey baster shoved up her uterus pipe to get impregnated to have this 14 children that we've all come to know and love out here. But the reason that I continue to... Uh, put her as a point of subject matter on this program is because the media and the liberal and feminist Hollywood out here are embracing this woman as if she's some sort of Mother Teresa, as if she's some sort of poster child, as if she's some sort of role model to the new American female out here. That's what's unfortunate, folks. You had Julia Roberts uh, on David Letterman not too long ago, sitting here saying, Oh, we shouldn't pick on Octo, Mom. We should leave that poor girl alone. Uh, it's just ridiculous, folks. I mean, uh, this needs to be called what it is, and it's a genetic freak show. It's a sideshow circus. It is what I've been talking about this whole time that I've conducted broadcast uh, since the inception of this particular show, folks. This is liberalism and feminism trying to anesthetize us, desensitize us with all these ridiculous notions, suggestions, images, uh, violence, sexual depravity. I mean, all this to socially engineer, <clears throat> excuse me, folks, to socially engineer the family, folks. And that's exactly what it's done. And that's what I have con continued to talk about on this program. I mean, I I'm a social observer, folks. I... I, I'm a political uh, uh, prognosticator. I'm a, uh, a student of history. I mean, I am seeing what is happening here, and I have called it, folks, and we are seeing it with this octomom, all right? This octomom here that's trying to sit here. I mean, why exactly is there so much of an infatuation as far as the mainstream media is concerned? I can understand why a conservative show like this is talking about this uh, you know, ridiculous freak, this lunatic, 
uh, you know, this is the, the a, a kind of a sick broad that is mangling her face in an attempt to, in an obvious attempt to look like Angelina Jolie. So there's definitely some sort of star fixation. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was one of their motives to shit out these 14 children, with all due respect. But why is there a fascination in the mainstream media, in Hollywood? I mean, everybody's putting her at a focal point of interest. Why? Well, I'll tell you why, folks. What I've said, and I'll continue to say it, this is another attempt to implement the absolute pussification of America. And I know that there's some folks out there, you know, tickling their nads, saying, oh, oh, that's funny, oh. It's not funny, folks. This is a serious subject matter. Uh, I, I had a couple of shows back. I uh, talked about an article that I read off the Associated Press that we have surpassed, in this modern day and age, we have surpassed the baby boom of the 1950s. And 40%, according to this article, but I think it's a little bit more than that, but according to this article, 40% of those were born out of wedlock. That's right, they're born out of wedlock, folks. And, you know, sometimes I say that and I just feel so jaded, you know. Because I've been saying this garbage for four years, you know. I I haven't been just sitting here, you know, just barely observing this. I've seen it. I've seen America implode from the inside out. And it's it's not to anybody. uh, Look, a lot of it has to do with the American people. Because everybody has free will out here. I mean, that's the whole concept of uh, this social experiment that we live in that's called America. It's free will. It's freedom. But when people fail to realize what freedom means, what it represents, it doesn't mean to be free to sit on your fat jelly ass and watch the boob tube and recreate an alternate perception reality. All right? I mean, you know, freedom is about... Being able to speak and have discourse of dissent about political subject matters, historical subject matters, any subject matter. And not to sit here and suppress another ideology. And you see, folks, what did I say before uh, the liberals and the, and the feminists took over complete power of this government? What did I say last year? That once these people took power... Once the liberals and feminists finally took hold of this government, they were going to start implementing their little authoritarian little tentacles in one of, each and every one of us, folks. And that's exactly what they're doing. You're seeing it out here. First of all, they're trying to disguise this whole concept of a stimulus package and all these bailouts and omnis bills and, and all these other spending packages they're throwing out in the docket out here. They're having the people actually believe that this is somehow going to benefit them when this is an open raid on the American taxpaying system. And why do the people believe that somehow all these bills, all this ridiculous garbage is being spent, all the taxpaying dollars? There's a, we're selling out our great, 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 great grandkids. And all this ridiculous spending, the reason the people aren't sitting here and trying to register it in that stupid, ridiculous noggin of yours, or theirs, excuse me, or yours, is because because you're too anesthetized with the media as your source of news and information. You actually believe that because it says, oh, such and such news network or this and that news association, that they're going to actually tell you the truth that they're going to actually tell you information that is pertinent to your personal liberty, to your personal freedom, to the Constitution, to American sovereignty. You see, that's what you just don't seem to understand. That's why you've got a whole American populace out here on their knees begging for more spending. They think that this is the greatest thing since, I mean, who the hell knows since when? I mean, have you seen these liberals out here? try to justify the ridiculous garbage. You know what their justification is out there? The tears are wiped off, obviously. These liberals are all wiped off their tears already, but they're trying to say, well, just give it time, okay, ghost? Just give it time, and I'll tell you, everything will be all right in America. I know this is breaking every economic precedent known to economic history, but it will work, ghost. Don't worry. 
Uh, Shut up, Billy. All right? Anyway, not to get off on a rant on that. We'll get to that in a minute. But the reason that I get off on that particular rant about uh, the ominous bills and uh, uh, all kinds of spending, selling out our great, 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 great grandchildren is because we are anesthetized. Even if you put it on these such-and-such news networks, we're anesthetized with what? With Octomom and that genetic freak show of a family that she's got. That's what we're bombarded with. Or you know what else we're, we're, we're bombarded with? We're bombarded with ridiculous, juvenile, trivial, you know, has nothing to do with our everyday life stories. Like, oh, uh, two roadies from Britney Spears' tour got arrested in Pittsburgh. That's, uh, you know, that's spot news out here in these ridiculous news organizations. Oh, what else? Oh, uh, if you want to buy uh, that stupid, ridiculous uh, moron Aaron Spelling, you know, unfortunately the man's dead. You know, I'm not trying to uh, desecrate the man's uh, body or anything, but, you know, he lived a great life. I don't feel sorry for the man, all right? I mean, he was pussy pampered for a good part of that old age that he had. All right? So for all you guys that are saying, oh, my God, I can't believe you said that about Aaron Spelling. Hey, you know, shove it up your ass, all right? Anyway, here it is in the news. Uh, It's going to cost you $150 million to buy his house. That's right. That's what's in America. That's what they're anesthetizing you with in the mainstream media out here, these kinds of stories. Stories that have nothing to do with you or me. And that's why I'm telling you folks, this Octo Mom, you need to get pissed off about it. This is not just some issue that is going to go away. They're going to continue to bring this up. You even got Dr. Phil out here salivating over this ridiculous freak show. I mean, did you? I mean, have you seen Dr. Phil? I mean, he, I, I mean, who the blue hell knows what he's given her? But haven't you noticed that Octo Mom is supposedly living large out here? Uh, you know, Dr. Phil allegedly had given her uh, access to 24-hour care by some – I don't even want to get into the story. If you if you heard it, I'm sure you've seen that ridiculous witch, uh, Gloria Allred's face, all over the media trying to, you know, sink her teeth into this. You know, she's a bloodsucker. Uh, you know, she's been all over the damn uh, news with all this ridiculous garbage. But anyway – the, the whole story goes that all these people are, 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 are inter- now intertwined with the uh, Octo Mom freak show, and everybody's going to make money. It's going to be a great book. It's going to be a great movie, and I hope you all appreciate it. Meanwhile, your country's going down the tubes. I hope you appreciate it, folks. 646-652-4869. We're going to take a few callers here since uh, uh, we're already early into the program, but I feel that, hey, uh, we need to talk about certain subject matters, and I want to hear from you. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. One 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 one. You're on the air. Yeah, ghost. Uh, you know, with all these uh, legals crossing the border and then the baby boom, like you're talking about. Look, ten years, fifteen years down the line, where do we put all these people? What do you mean, where do we put all these people? I mean, I mean, it's just going to be gridlock. I mean, what's going to happen? You, know, you look down the line, with overpopulation is going to be a huge problem. It already uh, is a huge problem. I wouldn't say overpopulation is a huge problem at all. I think it's it's overpopulation in dense metropolises. But if you go into some of the rural regions, I mean, there's a scarcity of people anywhere. That's true. That's true. But 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 the thing about it is, is that what kind of people are overpopulating America? Is it American people, American citizens, or is it illegal immigrants? That are and, and folks, I'm not trying to make any accusations. You look it up for yourself. Go to your nearest search engine and go to government. Type in government grants, and you're going to find grants being given to illegal immigrants to get free housing, free uh, small business initiatives. Uh, have you seen this, sir? I, I don't know. I don't know if you've been. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen it. But not only that, but I mean, they pack. I mean, they could pack four or five of these. For, you know, a whole family, you know, cousins, uncles into one house, and that that just it, it's hard to compete with that, you know, just person to person. And they'll fit see. a whole damn, they'll fit a whole family into one house, and it's you know, you got a, a, a American family, a man, a wife, and a, and, a, and a child, and it's hard to compete with that. 
Well, it's not only hard to compete with that, it's hard to compete with the fact that they can work below minimum wage. And the reason that they can work below minimum wage, and this, these liberals and these feminists like to throw a humanitarian spin on this whole illegal immigrant issue, but the reason that they can work below minimum wage and still maintain sustenance is because they don't pay any taxes, and yet they can still capitalize on the entitlements that every American is capitalizing on. And I think this is a disgrace to every man and woman in uniform out there and, and, and everybody who's ever spilt blood for this country, anybody who ever loved America, I think it's, it's just horrific. Most definitely. It is It is disturbing. I got one one quick comment. Uh, all these idiots, these uh, celebrities, they're all, just like you said, they're all a bunch of phonies. When I watch these award shows, they're they're just... They're stupid. They're corny. I wouldn't even want to be a celebrity because it's just they're just a bunch of phonies. Up, I mean, that's what they do for a living. That they, who who are they really? I mean, they're living in a, a, a whole different per, personage, uh, day in and day out. Who are these people? Uh, people I, need I, to wake up and, and start, you know, looking looking to uh, the, their parents and uh, you know the the t- teachers and the real people in, in America as role models. Well, you know what, I, I can partly agree with you on that, and I want to thank you for calling, sir. I do agree that Hollywood needs to go. You know, I think Hollywood and all the entertainment industry at this point who has basically held reign, monopoly over all the entertainment out here long enough, I think it's time for these people just go ahead and go away. I'm sick of these people. You know, you got liberal Hollywood out here, uh, you know, during the Oscars, and they still may strike, but they're threatening strike. You know, the Hollywood actors, once again, are threatening strike, like, oh, I'm just not getting paid enough because, oh, uh, uh, I need to make 25, I need to make 30 million a picture. It's ridiculous, folks. And you see, you've got people salivating over these ridiculous morons, all right? I mean, they're playing with their pecker shafts every time these people are on the boob tube. Why do you think such and such news organization throws Angelina Jolie's face all over the damn place? I mean, why do you think they do that so they can keep you watching? And how do they know that you're watching? Because you're sitting there doing it. And advertisers know you're doing it. Everybody knows you're doing it. It's sick, folks, when you should be worried about what's going on with this country, what's going on with America. It's horrible. I, I don't know, folks. I, I, I know that uh, we're still on this Octo Mom situation, but the reason that I'm bringing her up on a, a, as a point of subject matter on this program once again is just to reinforce that this woman is the poster child of what I had always been talking about. You can look back in the archives, folks, to what uh, to, to hear some of my previous commentary. There's a lot of it, I tell you that, about the feminist movement and how it's implemented itself on our society to the point where it's re-engineering. It is re-engineering the family. Single-parent families are the majority of the day. Forty percent of these of this new baby boom that we have that has surpassed the 1950s baby boom. Forty percent of those born are out of wedlock, and this is it. All right, this is the new America that we're living in, folks. Now, every time you see Octo Mom on your boob tube, and, and it, look, I said this many shows ago, and I'm going to say it again. If you want to protest against uh, the lack of information that you're receiving on the boob tube, please, folks, just don't pay for cable anymore. Just uh, unplug your cable and tell them to piss off with the bill. You've got this new uh, high-definition malarkey that's out here. Apparently, the reception is a lot better, and you can still get your local programming. There's a lot more... Uh, I don't know, there's a lot more programming that you can get from the old rabbit ears, from what I understand. You know, and, and, and if you're not suffice to that, why don't you hook up your computer to the damn TV? You can do that now, folks. I mean, there are television shows. Uh, these uh, news organizations, these news outlets, they go live on the Internet if you want to still hold loyalty to these ridiculous conglomerates that have disinformed you thus far. 
uh, you know, you can have TV shows, your 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 big time movie networks. Everything is online right now, folks. You can go ahead and do it and hook it up to your damn computer, uh, hook your computer up to your TV, and protest against the damn cable companies because these cable companies are ridiculous, folks. The networks are ridiculous. You should have the choice whether or not you should be subjected to sexual depravity or violence. If you want to do that, that should be your prerogative, your free will. Not some network that's trying to, you know, suggest to your family that something is good, something is bad. Su- suggesting that being, you know, philanderous in your marriage is somehow okay or acce- uh, ac- acceptable or equated to woman liberation. This is filth, folks. we got to stop it already. And anyway, I'm going to drop Octomom, but I'm going to leave it at this. Folks, remember, I-, I want you to know that this woman is a disgrace, and she should be thrown in an institution somewhere. And it's sick and it's grotesque that Gloria Allred and that ridiculous Dr. Phil have sank their little capitalist teeth into this ridiculous genetic freak show of a story but let me tell you something, those kids should be taken away from that octo whore, octo mom, whatever her name is. They need to be taken away, and she should be uh, put in a straitjacket in some institution somewhere. She's a ridiculous, sick, sadistic person, and I think that she should be ashamed of herself. But, folks, we live in the day and age where there's no shame. There's no shame in this day and age anymore. All right? I mean, you, you got people going on the TV eating pig rectum for $25,000, folks. And I'm not joking, all right? They're sitting here eating pig rectum and, uh, you know, goat's nuts and, you know, this type of crap. I mean, there is no shame any longer, folks. This is, this is a new America where people will do anything. Everything's for sale. Everything, including you. Everybody's got a price. Just like the Million Dollar Man used to say when wrestling used to be family entertainment. Everybody's got a price. Anyway, folks, 646-652-4869. We're going to take another call here from Dez. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put him on or her on the air. Dez, are you there? I'm not a her, but I'm on the air. Well, how's it going? Can you hear? Calm down, man. Calm down. What are you talking about, calm down? My my country's going down the tubes here. I mean, we're on the Titanic, and everybody's just sitting there tickling their ass crack, thinking it's a great day in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Come on, man. man. You're saying it like it is. I am 100% with you on that. All right. Well, well, why are you telling me to calm down, man? Because I want you to live to be a long life. Well, you know, I've already lived a long life. I've already, uh, you know, raised children. I've got grandchildren, and it makes me sick that my grandchildren and possibly my great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren are going to live in a world where it is now turned into some sort of quasi-communist, socialist, authoritarian, non-American country, and I can't believe that nobody else is up, you know, and just right. upset about it. Well, I won't tell you what. There are a lot of people upset about this and I want to I just want to let you know that we are out here and we are going to stop it well we we, we need uh, somebody to put a stop to it that's for sure I mean we need to you know the people to participate in their government we need them to go out there and start running for offices out here and not be corrupted by this a ridiculous system just because somebody donates into your campaign doesn't mean that you should remain loyal to them when it means uh, when it comes to implementing legislation uh we need some major changes out here and uh, unfortunately people are submitting the majority of people are submitting to this uh socialist notion well can i give my opinion about what i think what is really going on uh, go ahead okay back in the late 80s Reagan administration uh, were trying to bring down the Soviet Union and you know how they did that they bankrupted the Soviet Union with the Star Wars are you familiar with that yeah well yeah of course yeah of course we all remember that okay now this is what this administration these people these Marxists are trying to do to us now they're trying to bankrupt us 
Well, that's blatantly obvious. Yes, I know, and you say and I understand your frustration. That why isn't anybody doing something about it, right? Well, I because understand the, the why. No, I can understand why nobody's doing anything about it. You've got the mainstream media hypnotizing these people into believing that this is somehow a good idea when they have no idea what is going on, even though it's right there if you just search for it. I know that these Marxists that are in power now only have one agenda. It's very simple. Bankrupt the United States federal government. Then they're gonna then they will get what they want. It's not gonna happen. Well, I you know, I, you that. I, I hope it doesn't happen because I've I've prognosticated all these chains of events. If you if you look back in the archive, I knew this was gonna happen. I mean, I, either way you looked at it, you were going to have authoritarianism, but what I want the people to understand out here is that we don't need authoritarianism. We're Americans. We're, we're free out here. What we need to do is secure our borders. We need to kick the illegal immigrants out of this country. We need to reanalyze our whole economic situation. We need to go and also reanalyze everything we've done uh, on an international scale, and we need to go ahead and, and start from scratch. Well, I don't think we need to go that far. I I really believe that people like me, okay, entrepreneurs, the bourgeoisie, are still out here, and we're just kind of doing our little deal. And I watched something on TV today about bankers, uh, not the big boys, but the little boys. Eighty-five percent of the banks in the United States of America are doing fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We I, I, are doing we're, we're doing fine, but it's, these Marxists are going to push a point, and then we're going to say we're going to fight back, and then they will go away, and we'll be fine. Okay. So, uh, in, in what fashion? You know, in, in, in what you're saying, in what fashion are you going to push back? Are you going to are you going to somehow rally the people out here to? Uh, push against this Marxist ideology. I mean, you've got the unions also in the pocket of the of this, uh, you know, uh, new ideology right. that has taken forth uh, here in America. You've got the unions now staging events all over America. You know, they're the ones who right. stage the AIG right. uh, situation, right. the AIG uh, uh, executives. Uh, they were out there just like mobs in the old 1800s out there with. Uh, burning flares and you know, pitchforks. I mean, it was ridiculous. Right, and that's the see. This is America, okay? And the, what we have that these other countries don't have—190 of them or whatever—we have individual freedoms, okay? And absolutely, 90, 95 percent of us are doing our little deal. We got these little peons like the Clintons and the Baracks and all these socialist, liberal, Marxist people trying to do their little deal. And what's going to happen? See, this when we, what's going to happen? See, that's why I'm so I'm so it's so eerie that we're, it's so quiet and these people are just getting away with what they're doing. Let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm, my opinion, okay. All right, go ahead. The they're gonna get exposed. Then once they get exposed, which is happening now, I'm, I'm telling you, it's happening now. These people will get exposed, and then once they get exposed, the problem with these people, their their philosophy is ends justify the means. Okay, their ends are working now. They have consequences, and I'm guaranteeing you that pretty soon these consequences are going to start coming up, and it's going to backfire on these people, and then we're going to be back to the United States of America, which I love. Uh, so, so do I'm I, not sir. worried about <clears throat> Well, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, if you put all together, I mean, you know, it spells like a recipe for disaster. And I'm going to talk about a couple of other things later on in the program, but uh, I really hope it is that way. I really hope that the American people finally wise up and get out of this political Marxist-based romance and start standing up for the Constitution and the freedoms that... Uh, that were accorded to us by our creators, and then we, uh, you know, give that power to the government. We allow that power to be the, to, given to the government under a social contract, which is the Constitution. And if they start breaking that, if they start wanting to change that, if they start wanting to get rid of that, 
uh, you know, that is an infringement on the people's uh, social contract, or at least part of the social contract. You understand what the social contract is, don't you? Uh, you absolutely. Read, uh, what, what's that guy's name that wrote that? Well, there was two uh, guys. There was two guys that wrote it. There was Rousseau and John Locke. There you go, Rousseau. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. He and is John. Smart. And, He's smart. Of course, He's I smart. know what I'm talking about out here. I know I sound like I some too. redneck out here, but hey, I'm from Texas, and and us Texans, we're real independent minded. Uh, Are you from we, Texas? That's right. You know where I'm from. Where are you from? Texas. That, well, that's right. That's what that's what I'm saying. Where I'm we're... from Dallas, Texas. Where are you from? Houston? No, I'm not from I the Hill not. Country. No, I'm from the Hill Country oh, really? out here. Lano and Georgetown. And... Uh, somewhere within that region. I don't want to say well, don't... anywhere. You're right. Yeah, because I'd be, I'd right. I get all kinds of death threats from liberals and feminists, but I could give a rat's ass if they come near me. I, I, I practice right. my that's... Second Amendment. And they will that's why I went hunt. I, I, that's why I went hunting during my when I was younger out in the hill country. Love it. It's great hunting. I tell you that. Do you know the Enchanted Rock? Of course, we know the Enchanted Rock. It's love uh, it. one, one of the great uh, Texas landmarks and uh, the, the last remnants of a uh, of the last uh, mountain or volcano love or something it. of that nature. Yeah, I know. I know all about it. Believe me, I'm deeply I, rooted in Texas culture out here. I guess we're brothers then, aren't we? Absolutely. And we're going to talk about the, the battle at the border that we're having out here also later on in the program. So maybe you can call back up uh, and talk about that. Okay, I'll do that. All right, thanks a lot, Dish. Uh, but let me tell you, folks, uh, I, I, I'm sorry for you folks that were out there saying, oh, my God, here's a couple of Texans, you know, uh, shooting the, you know what, uh, you know, reminiscing. Uh, hey, folks, uh, us here in Texas, we're still proud about uh, our individual freedoms. Uh, we understand that uh, we're not going to sit here and just allow uh, anything to go on. I mean, we've got Texas uh, state representatives initiating, and I don't know if it's already been passed or not. I know I should be up on those types of things. There's just so many things to keep up with at this point. I'm, I'm more... Uh, uh, worried about what they're doing at the federal level, but uh, I know that there's been legislation out here in Texas that's going to allow the state of Texas to retain its 10th and 11th Amendment's rights, which is uh, states' rights over the federal government. And if Ob uh, Obama and the Marxists and the liberals and the feminists out there decide that they want to you know, supersede the states' rights and do something that uh, the states uh, do not want or that particular state d does not want, well, you know, the legislatures can somehow uh, supersede the executive branch, which is the governor in most states. It's just ridiculous malarkey, folks. We don't need the federal government trying to dictate states' rights to individual states. That's why every time you cross state lines, things are different. You know, some, some states, some counties... Uh, uh, don't allow alcohol drinking. They don't allow smoking. They don't allow this. They don't allow that. Some some do. Some don't. So, folks, please, uh, you know, participate in your government. That's the solution. You know, I know everybody's always talking about, oh, ghost, what's the solution? What's the solution? Uh, Billy, the solution is just going out there and winning the battle of the ballot box, organizing. You know, going door to door if necessary. If you really care about this country, if you really care about preserving freedom, do what I've been doing for a long period of time. Go out there, go door to door, organize people, even if it's just your neighborhood, even if it's just a small district. Be a voting force and gather around a specific issue, a specific idea, a specific ideology, and go out there and threaten these damn politicians that, hey, if you don't start listening to your constituency, if you don't start listening to the people, then we're going to do whatever it takes to unelect your ass out of office, you stupid, power-hungry autocrat, because that's what most of these damn politicians are nowadays, nothing but a bunch of power-hungry, nimrodic, buffoonery, autocrat imbeciles. Anyway, I didn't mean to get off on that rant. We're going to get off on Octomom. Just remember, every time you see Octomom's uh, mangled-looking face, just remember that that stupid philanderous, uh, I don't know if she's philanderous because, you know, she gets turkey basters, you know, shoved up her uterus pipe, but this woman is the poster child of the feminist and liberal movement. 
This is what they want the future family to look like. They want all the future families to be single parents so that the state can have more control and more time with your children than their actual families. And as a result, you can uh, better mold a better authoritarian-based society in that fashion. Anyway, folks, 646-652-4869. We're going to go ahead and uh, segue into the next uh, topic that I had on the program, and that topic is a... uh, 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 this one uh, state representative out of West Virginia named C- uh, Craig Blair, which seems, you know, with all due respect to Mr. Or, you know Blair, he looks like one of these uptight pieces of, you know, anal retentive trash. But you know, he has some good points in some of these uh, in, in one of these initiatives that he's trying to put forth. He's trying to consider uh, to have people take drug tests if they want to collect welfare. That's right, folks. They want He wants people to, you know, have mandatory drug tests if you're going to be collecting welfare or government cheese or any of those other entitlements, which at first I think is a good idea. When I first heard about this piece of trash initiating this, I was like, hey, that's a great idea. But then when I, when I you know, read on and, and I... I ran on about what Mr. Blair was talking about initiating. He's not even he's not only talking about drug testing people that are on welfare, uh people that are on, you know, food stamps and government cheese or anything of that nature. No, he's also talking about drug testing people that are collecting unemployment at this point. And I, I, I read today that what is it, over five million people at at this point in time are collecting unemployment? They're collecting unemployment checks from the government, and according to Craig Blair out there in West Virginia, he wants to initiate legislation that forces these people to, you know, uh, commit to drug testing to collect uh, unemployment. Now, look, the reason that I think that that's a bad idea, I don't think it's a bad idea to uh, drug test welfare people, uh, people that are collecting government cheese and and the food card and free housing and and all this ridiculous malarkey. I think they should be drug tested. Damn right. But it, you know, to sit here and drug test, uh, you know, people that are collecting unemployment checks. I just think it's just sad because when people are unemployed, what are they going to do? There, I mean, of course they're going to try to find a job. They're going to try to get employed. Uh, but but what are they going to do to eat away their sorrows out here when they can't uh, take care of their family? They got to go out there, and I'm not trying to condone this activity, but it happens, folks. It's human nature. People go out there and hit the bottle. They go out there and uh, you know uh, indulge in uh, you know prescription drugs, which are legal, you know, unless you got a prescription or don't have a prescription. Uh, that's what they do. That's what happens. And here you got Mr. Craig Blair out of West Virginia. He wants to drug test poor people who are down in their luck. I mean, uh, most of the people that are right now that are unemployed, most of them now, are people that have been laid off because of the downturn in the economy. All the 600-plus thousand uh, jobs that are lost a month, that's where the crux of that 5 million that's collecting unemployment right now, that's where, that's where it's coming from. And Mr. Blair over here, he wants to drug test those folks. I, th- I, I completely disagree with that. I want to hear from you. What do you think? Uh, now, I agree that we should drug test wel- people collecting welfare. You know, if, if you're one of these dirty dish rag whores that shitted out about five or six kids from five or six different fathers, and you're sitting here collecting about five or six thousand dollars worth of government subsidies, you're damn right. I think that dirty philanderous piece of Club hopping trash should be drug tested. You're damn right. If she's going to be collecting that kind of subsidies, but you know, to sit here, Mr. Craig Blair out of West Virginia, to initiate legislation that is going to drug test these poor people that are collecting unemployment, I just think that's unfair. I think it's unfair because you know that you're you're hitting these people at a vulnerable point in their life where they can't take care of their family. They can barely maintain sustenance. They're probably groveling to family members. Hey, I've I've got family members calling me out of the wazoo trying to say, hey, I I, I need help. You know, uh, that's what people have to do. And, I mean, it's, uh, with with all due respect, I mean, it, it hurts a person. So, of course, 
of course they're going to go out and they're going to, you know, do all this malarkey. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, hit the bottle of a hooch a couple of times and maybe go out there and conduct themselves in some ridiculous manner and be susceptible to participating in, in taking uh, illegal narcotics or drugs. And uh, Mr. Craig Blair, all right, he wants to, uh, you know, drug test these people, and if you happen to be collecting unemployment and you're drug tested and you happen to toot it on a damn, uh, you know, magic dragon within the past couple of weeks, unfortunately you're going to lose your unemployment benefits, and I just don't think that's fair. Well, you know, not only does Mr. Craig Blair want to do that, all right, he also wants to drug test people that are collecting lottery winnings. So how about that? Huh? He wants to drug test people that are also, that won the lottery. Just imagine, all right? Just imagine you're just one of these morons that, you know, toots a couple of, you know, uh, Philly blunts on the weekend or something. And you just hit the damn power law, Powerball lottery, all right? You know, $300 million or some crap. You know, well, according to Craig Blair's little initiation that he wants to, he wants to limit anybody who tests positive for narcotics or illegal drugs to be limited to $600 in lottery winnings. So if you happen to have a little bit of pot in your system or something, under Craig Blair's bill out here, uh, if you hit the $300 million Powerball lottery and you puff the magic dragon, you're only getting $600. All right? I think it's horrific. I think it's disgusting. But, but welcome to America. You know, the, the, you know, the, this is it. Now, I agree that, you know, anybody who's collecting welfare, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea to sit here and drug test these philanderous whore bags that are not only capitalizing the entitlement teat. You know, they, these women out here, uh, not only are they capitalizing off of five or six different uh, kids, uh entitlement benefits but also they're playing the child support lottery uh they're playing the damn child support lottery also so so i agree that anybody who's collecting welfare drug test their asses and if they they're found with any kind of narcotics just cut the funding off but to sit here and cut funding off to people that are collecting unemployment to, you know where they're at their most vulnerable point in line i'm talking about working people that are collecting unemployment, they just got laid off. They're one of the hor you know, horrific stories that you've been hearing about within the past several months that, you know, that have been laid off. Y you know, you've got Craig Blair saying that he wants to drug test those people. He wants to drug test anybody who wins a lottery. I think it's bad. I think it's horrific. Anyway, I want to hear from you folks. 646-652-4869 is the number to call here. Uh, we're going to take a caller here from the 1111 area code. Hello? Is that the best you got? Baron! Is this the best you got? Are you a liberal? Are you a liberal? You, 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 you. Get this here. Get him off! Get him off the line! You see, folks, this is what I'm saying here. You know, once you start putting subject matters forth, like I put forth here on this program, you get these types of methods of agitation from these liberal long hairs and these feminist bull dykes that want to, you know, come over here and disrupt the show. You know, that's what they want you to do. You know, they don't want to hear about, uh, you know, their entitlement checks being jeopardized because we're talking about possibly drug testing people that are collecting welfare entitlements. I think it's a great idea. I am a little sympathetic to those that are collecting unemployment and, and that are supposedly going to be drug tested under Craig Blair's little bill here. I'm also a little sympathetic to those folks that won the lottery. You know, I mean, according to Craig Blair's bill, if you win the Powerball lottery and win $300 million cash, if you have a little pot in your system, you can only be limited to 600 freaking dollars. Uh, I don't know, folks. Uh, you know, I, you, there's always good, there's always bad, but uh, it's just re it's really unfortunate, folks. Anyway, 647 area code, you're on the air. Hey, it's your favorite. Uh, well, what, what do you want? Uh, uh, come on, 
want to say it. I'm a Canadian. Uh, we all know that you're you're humping a dead moose. We all know and we all know that you're humping a dead moose in Canada. You're oh, yeah. calling us from the crapper. What do you want? I love you. Remember we talked about you being on my show and you being the old spokesperson because I like your. I, I don't want to be. On, I don't do interviews. I don't. I don't go on anybody else's show unless I happen oh, to be listening to it. Because you're so great. Get you this, are. I love your get show. This. Get this maple leaf worshiping piece of Canadian bacon, uh, Michael J. Fox loving, uh, uh, William Shatner ass licking, Celine Dion worshiping piece of trash off the damn phone. Get her off. Anyway, sorry, folks. I mean, I just don't like. I, I didn't, this is this ridiculous nut job who calls me on a consistent basis. You know, I should have recognized her phone number, but unfortunately, I'm I'm talking about uh, different subject matters. I look on the switchboard, I see a you know a whole bunch of calls here at random. I just pick that one, and unfortunately, I get this uh, uh, maple leaf up the ass having she mail or shim or whatever it is calling me from the crapper. You know, thinking that it's a great day in Mister Rogers' neighborhood. This is what I'm talking about: liberal agitation. All right, don't let her. Uh, trick you into believing that oh you know uh, whatever she wants you to just trick your mind into going in another direction stay on the subject matter at hand folks uh, you know stay focused and the focus is is america all right not some canadian bacon you know idiot that's humping a dead moose somewhere we don't care about that crap we're talking about america and i want to know your opinions folks 646-652-4869 I think it's a great idea. Just imagine, all right? Just imagine, you know, all because let me tell you something, folks. Uh, I do live in Texas. I live in the Hill Country area out there, uh, you know, in the outskirts of Austin, Texas, way in the outskirts. Uh, but let me tell you, if you go south of Austin, and I've said this many times, but if you don't believe me, go see it for yourself because it's a damn sight to see. Everything south of Austin, Texas, is legitimately and literally the colon of America, folks. All the crap, I guess, that's left over from America, like all all the uh, you just the coal. I, I don't even know what to describe it. These people have no shame. That they have no conscience. They're walking around like zombies. They got sour scowls on their face. They got about eight or nine children trailing them on a consistent basis. I mean, it's just ridiculous, folks. Uh, it's just the colon of America, folks. But these w- women out there, uh, you know, below Austin, Texas, I'm telling you, folks, these people are capitalizing off of the entitlement system, and it needs to stop, and it needs to stop somehow. And I think that we would, would be a great thing. Drug test these damn uh, philanderous whore bags capitalizing off of our even liberal and feminist entitlement system. Drug test these women and see how, uh, you know, straight they'll be then, huh? I wonder how many of them will continue to have these, uh, you know, three to four to five thousand dollar a month entitlement checks every month if they have to sit here and be drug tested on a consistent basis. I don't think it'll happen. I don't think it'll happen whatsoever. It's ridiculous. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. Uh we got another caller here from the one 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 area code. You're on the air. Hello. Stop playing with your Peter Popper. Oh, you just hung up. Why in the blue hell are you gonna call up to the t- true conservative radio show here and just hang up? You're just gonna sit there and just be like <laughs> I mean, it's stupid. Um, But I think that this is the tip of the iceberg, folks. I mean, not only should we drug test these welfare recipients, we should just cut the damn funding from them, frankly, folks. I think it would be a great day, a great day in America, if we decided to cut all these entitlements from all these women who this liberal and feminist entitlement system rewarded for shitting out about five or six kids from five or six different fathers. It would be a great day in America, because what would they do? I mean, just just look at their stupid faces. You know, uh, you know, just what would they do? They wouldn't know what to do. 
they don't know what to do now, and they're still getting all these entitlements, and they're still collecting all this, uh, you know, government cheese, and they're still collecting all these child support payments. They still don't know what to do. Welcome to America, folks, the new America that we're living in, and I hope you're happy with it. Anyway, uh, more about uh, Craig Blair here. Now, I don't know what crawled up his uh, shit funnel and died. But, uh, you know, I don't think that anybody should be, you know, anybody who invests in the lottery. I mean, a lottery is a gambling mechanism to generate tax uh, funds. And I, I don't I don't understand why, you know, having a drug test should be mandatory if you paid for a damn lottery ticket. It happens to be the winning number. You win the Powerball lottery. And, you know, just because, you you know, you toot the magic dragon every now and then, all of a sudden, uh, here we are, you, you, you're only limited to $600 of that $300 million lottery because Craig Blair says, um, we shouldn't be promoting drug use, and we say, well, folks, since nobody really has an opinion on this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it as this. I think we should. Uh, Drug test welfare recipients, anybody who's collected an entitlement, anybody who is benefiting off of shitting out children, benefiting off of collecting some sort of, uh, you know, ridiculous disability like, uh, you know, I'm uh, ADD, uh, uh, I'm autistic, uh, I got obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, I'm bipolar, uh, I mean, whatever, I think those people also should be drug tested. See, if they're, you know, sucking on a crack pipe, uh, you know, if they're going to, you know, do do something of that nature, I think that's what they should be doing, too. But, you know, to uh, drug test the people that are collecting unemployment benefits, uh, absolutely not. I think that's horrific. Uh, people that are going to win a lottery should not be subjected to any type of drug test. I think that's an infringement on our personal rights. If you want my personal opinion, folks, I don't think that... You know, trivial jobs, you know, jobs that require no type of, uh, you know, skill, any type of intelligence in any fashion. I don't even think that they should be requiring people to submit to drug tests. I I, I can't believe every time that, you know, I, I search through the want ads whenever I'm reading the paper, you know, because I'm just, you know, curious about uh, my local communities and local communities that are around me, their particular markets, and you know, Texas is doing fairly well as far as an economy is concerned, uh, but the, these people are requiring drug tests to work at a freaking fast food joint, for heaven's sake. I mean, I just think that's ridiculous, because first and foremost, folks, I mean, it's it's not the question about you submitting to a drug test. It's the fact that you are actually given a, a bodily fluid, DNA, to a corporate entity or, uh, you know, a boss or a small business owner. I think that is an invasion of privacy. Now, I know this should be a subject matter on a completely different show, uh, but, I mean, you have to think about the type of information one could have if they seriously did an analysis on your DNA. Uh, they could figure out if you're predestined to have cancer, if you're predestined to have heart disease, if you're uh, doing this, if you're doing that, and, and, and they can base their judgment of hiring you based on that. So that's why I feel that drug testing is just a, an invasion of one's personal rights. And if you happen to be going out there looking for a job, be very wary about going out there and submitting to these drug tests because they have your DNA, and once they have your DNA, they know everything about you. They know every damn thing about you, folks. I mean, it's your it's your DNA, for heaven's sake. I think it's horrible. Anyway, folks, I'm going to go ahead and segue from, you know, since we're talking about, you know, drugs, and we're talking about drug testing welfare recipients and that sort of thing, I'm going to start talking about here the battle at the border. That's right, folks. I'm going to talk about here... In Texas, we're having a battle here at the border, and I know it's been on uh, a national news scale, so that's why we're going to talk about it. Well, why is there a battle at the border, folks? 
Well, first and foremost, Mexico is not the uh, best economy around, so to speak. All right? I mean, you're either dirt poor or filthy rich in Mexico. There is no in-between, folks. There is no middle class in Mexico, kind of like what's happening here in America, but let's not get into that debate at this point. Uh, so what happens to these people that are desolate and don't know what the, the hell to do? So they, they, they go over here and hop, skip, and jump over the fence and try to come here in America. And they're willing to work for dirt cheap. They're willing to pack each other about 100 in a one-bedroom apartment somewhere. Uh, so since you have an economy that's based on you're either dirt poor or filthy rich, uh, you have – a susceptible populace into being uh, a part of this whole drug cartel business uh, because most of the drug cartels come from below Mexico. They come from, uh, you know, Colombia, Bolivia, you know, all the South American tr countries that, you know, make all the great cocaine and all the great marijuana that everybody consumes here in America. Well, the people in Mexico have fell victim, and, and I'm talking about all the people that aren't filthy rich, because, folks, there are a lot of filthy rich people in Mexico. But for every filthy rich person, there's about at least 10,000 dirt poor people. There is no middle class. So they either come here to America, and if they can't get here to America because they can't pay a coyote or they can't you know, uh, figure out a conniving way to get through the border – so they have to resort to some other fashion to maintain sustenance, to maintain an opportunity. And who's there right in the south of their uh, particular country? Well, it's the damn cartels. That's right. You've got Colombia. You've got uh, Bolivia. you got all these cartels that are, you know, basically recruiting these poor Mexican folk that weren't able to get across the border. They're recruiting these people into becoming these big gangs, these you know mini cartels. You know they're they're uh, you know drug kingpins in certain areas of Mexico, and you're and basically what you're having is you're having uh, the drug cartels in Colombia and Bolivia and all these other places uh, funding and literally recruiting little factions all over Mexico to either distribute the narcotics in a fashion where they'll either hook some of the people in Mexico or mule it across the damn border into the United States. <laughs> All right, I mean, it's getting that desperate out here. Now, the reason uh, you've got Mexico being a little unstable is because you've got all these little, these little drug gangs in Mexico fighting amongst one another because they all want to be kingpin of who's going to be the main distributor from getting the drugs from Colombia and the South America region into the United States. Now, why does everybody want access to the United States? Why do all the drug dealers and the drug cartels, why do they do this? Why is all this organized criminality, why is it even inspired by drugs? Why does drugs have that even motivating of a force? Well, folks, it's because 80%, and put that through your thick, stupid skulls, 80% of the world's drugs are consumed right here in America. That's right. 80% of the world's drugs are consumed right here in America. That's why you have these Colombians and South Americans out here influencing the destabilization of Mexico. It has nothing to do with any kind of ideology, you know, to, it's not like Al Qaeda out here, you know, who wants us to get out of their holy land, or you know, it's not some, you know, it all comes down to money, folks. Is what it comes down to. It's business. I mean, this is a big black market. Drugs is a huge black market, folks. It's such a black market that it can literally make. Of you know, that's why they took out Pablo Escobar. Remember Pablo Escobar? He was the big drug kingpin in South America and Mexico. Why do you think back then they put so much emphasis in assassinating this prick? Because he was so powerful, he was so big, so rich, that he influenced governments, he influenced elections, he influenced judgments. 
He bought prisons, for heaven's sake. This idiot Pablo Escobar bought his own prison and, you know, uh, sentenced himself to, well, I don't know, what was it supposed to be, five years or something? But he couldn't keep himself contained in that thing, so he broke out and he had to conduct business as usual. And, uh, you know, he was a big threat to America's national security because he would influence international relations based on the trafficking of all these narcotics. And that's why they killed him. And ever since they killed him, folks, there's there's been a fight amongst everybody, you know, to, to who's going to reign control of that type of distribution. Because remember, the drugs in, in America drug, come from everywhere now. They're not just in South America. Even though South America is a big crux of the drug uh, source, uh, but but most of it, folks, you know, comes from a sporadic different areas. I mean, smuggled in from all all parts of the world. And uh, it's really sad that here we are, uh, it, America, the land of the free, home of the brave. Out here, we're uh, you know consuming eighty percent of the world's drugs. Well, you know, the reason that it becomes a, a, such a big market is because once you smuggle the drug into America, the price goes up. The farther north you go from the border, the price goes up, and it it becomes very lucrative for not only uh, you know those in Mexico who are being influenced by the cartels in South America to help destabilize the country out there in Mexico, but it also makes it uh, you know financially susceptible to American people to participate in this drug culture. That's why you have all these drug arrests. That's why you have so many drug dealers on the streets. You know, it's it's just there. It's easy money, folks. I mean, you know, idiots can go out there and buy $80 worth of cocaine and, you know, cut it up and mix it up with some crap and make about $400 at the end of the night. I mean, that's 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 the type of crap we're against here in this drug war. And, and lo and behold, I'm here in Texas. I'm on the damn front lines out here when it comes to watching what is happening here at the border in Texas. And, folks, the reason that we're having a battle at the border is because Mexico is going to become a failed state. As a matter of fact, if you want my personal opinion, I think Mexico is a damn failed state. I already think it is. It's just the uh, you know American government, the media, they don't want to hyper-sensationalize the people. They don't want to piss off the people. You know, They don't want to get their panties in a bunch there. But, folks, it is a failed state because... Uh, you know, there's just so much corruption. Now, how do we remedy this? How do we stop drug cartels from influencing uh, the stabilization of countries, influencing, uh, you know, uh, judgments and trials, influencing politicians and in, in different uh, uh, bodies of parliament? How do you do this? Or government, for that matter. Well, folks, uh, and, and I hate to say this, but, folks, it needs to be said. We need to legalize all the narcotics. We need to legalize all the drugs. You know, and we need to legalize it in a responsible fashion, though. Well, and I have said this, and I'm going to continue to advocate this, because that's what will cripple the damn cartels. The cartels will be crippled. They wouldn't be able to make any more money. Folks, the United States consumes 80% of the world's drugs out here, 80%. And we have task force, we got DEAs, we got FBIs, we got narcotics officers in, uh, in, in police departments, we got the AT, we got all this law enforcement based on stopping the trafficking and the narcotic distribution of these drugs. But how is it helping? Is it really helping, folks? Is it really solved the problem? It's made prisons into big business, that's for sure. It's made the majority of our citizens uh, a bunch of uh, convicts out here. Has it really solved any problem? Absolutely not. The reason that these cartels in South America are in existence, the reason they're having wars in Mexico, is because America, who consumes 80% of the world's drugs, is allowing these people to be funded, is allowing these people to be motivated, is allowing these people to continue to the death because they know whoever is the kingpin of this particular distribution center and that distribution center and that tunnel into the promised land, into the riches, into the loot, is Mexico. 
And we need help out here, folks, believe me. We need help down here in Texas. I mean, it's getting serious. You can't go across the border. Uh, you know, before in Texas, you, you should be able to go across the, the border and go to these little border towns, and they had these little gift shops and, you know, all these handmade goods. It was a little, you know, novelty place to go. There was a lot of poor people out there. You'd give a couple of dollars to the kids out there trying to make a hustle. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a good place to go. I used to like going out of the border. Uh, because, you know, it was a great marketplace. It, it provided an opportunity for folks that uh, were in a bad economic situation in America, or in America, in uh, Mexico, to f- attempt to uh, find something to do with themselves. Because, folks, in Mexico, I'm not kidding you, it's dirt poor or filthy rich. But, folks, you can't even go across the border anymore. You can't even go visit. I mean, they're advising American people, even go to Cancun, even go to, uh, you know, the tropical part of Mexico. They are advising American folks, do not go there. All right? Do not go there because if you go across the border, you're putting your own life at your own risk. Because uh, remember, folks, these people out here are desperate. That's why you're having destabilization in Mexico. The dirt poor are finally getting so desperate that you know they're being uh, susceptible to these uh like I said these uh cartels from South America they're influencing them by by giving them money drugs that sort of thing and they're seeing hey there's a a financial benefit for me to participate in this lifestyle and they create uh this type of uh situation that you're seeing in Mexico and if and people aren't doing that they're kidnapping folks folks uh, I don't know if you've you know read about it or have you you've heard about all the kidnappings in Mexico. If you happen to be a star in Mexico, I feel sorry for you. If you happen to be a star, one of those novelas or whatever you call them, I feel sorry for you because you're going to be kidnapped or attempted to be kidnapped. There's going to be threats in your life, on your life, and even as an American citizen, you threat you have a a, a big chance that you're going to be kidnapped. There was a uh, a family out here who was a uh, I, it was a big ranching family uh, made a lot of money I think off of uh, you know d- doing type of uh, uh, I think farming fruits and farming vegetables. Uh, well, they decided to go out there to Mexico because uh, they wanted to do some hunting at some lodge out there or something of that nature. Well, lo and behold, they got captive. They were held hostage. And their families, because the United States government can only do so much, folks. You know, they're not going to – I mean, if your family member, believe it or not, if your family member or you gets captured in one of these countries like this, they ain't going to go out there in a search-rescue mission to go get your ass. All right? You're not going to have John Rambo come out from a damn parachute and, you know, hop you out in a damn jet propulsion rocket. It's not going to happen, folks. You're there, and that's all there is to it. So these poor family members had to give these morons that kidnapped their, their – uh, it was uh, a husband and a son. They had to give these morons $50,000 apiece, cash, so that these uh, you know men can come back uh, safe. And, folks, they did it, all right? They did it. Now, back to the drug situation, because I know that there's some people in the chat room saying, well, who's going to distribute the drugs? Who's going to sell the drugs? Who's going to cultivate the drugs if drugs are legal? Well, I talked about this on several different shows, but I'm going to go over this uh, as quickly as possible, because there's a lot of people that listen to the program who know what I'm speaking of. I think that the United States government should either allow uh, you know, American companies to cultivate this particular product and sell it back to the government, So the government can distribute it, all right? The government itself can distribute these narcotics, no matter what it is. And I don't think that marijuana should be included in in these group of narcotics. I think that marijuana should be decriminalized. It shouldn't be sold in corner stores. It shouldn't be sold in bars by means. It it shouldn't be sold in packs of cigarettes or anything of that, or, or, or packaged like cigarettes. But it needs to be decriminalized. And it shouldn't even be linked up with the hardcore narcotics that really and truly ruin lives. But once again, let's get back to the subject matter. 
uh, we, we either have the government cultivated or the government subcontracted to private uh, uh, companies to cultivate the drugs and narcotics. They, in turn, sell it back to the government or give it to the government or negotiate some fashion in that transaction. The government then distributes these narcotics in high-dense metropolises. I'm talking about high-dense cities, you know, where you have most of the drug crime. You have most of the dope users. You have most of the drug dealers. And you distribute it in that fashion. You, you have these, uh, uh, you know, areas that are highly secure, obviously, uh, that where people can just go in, walk in, and get the drug of their choice. But if they go in and get the drug of their choice, they are going to have to, you know, unfortunately, they're going to have to be monitored. They're going to have to give their name. They're going to have to give their uh, their addresses, their phone numbers, their fingerprints. Uh, uh, they're going to have to give their entire identity, and each and every drug dose is going to be uh, tracked, uh, you know, so that... If anybody wants to employ anybody, you know, instead of going out here and forcing uh, potential employees to get drug tested, which I think is an invasion of people's privacy, uh, business owners can look in this new database, which is going to be government funded and obviously, uh, uh, you know, government uh, held, if you will. They can search the database to see if this potential employee has ever used cocaine, has ever used I don't know, heroin or morphine or shrooms or uh, whatever in the blue hell else they can distribute out of there. And you see, folks, not only would this take out the drug dealer, because the drug dealer makes money on the markup on how illegal it is in America. You see, the more illegal it is in any state, the higher the price of the drug is going to be. So, like, let's say you somehow got a pound of cocaine across the border here in, in Texas. Well, you take that pound of cocaine in Texas, it would probably cost you, I don't know, I, I don't even know, I, I, I've never done it, but let's say five, ten thousand, right? Well, you take it up north, and the higher north you go, you take it all the way to the edge of America, it triples in price. So there's a big markup there. But if you had a uh, you know distribution and cultivation scheme where it you know it would be cost effective because what makes drugs high priced is the fact that they're illegal. Uh, you know they're they're going to go ahead and uh, it's going to drive the cost completely down. It's going to take out the dope dealers. You know which I hate more than anything else. I hate the dope dealers. I know there's some people in here saying, well this is. This this is nuts. I can't believe that this is this is going on here. I can't believe this is being discussed. Well, look, I'm here in Texas, all right? Th these drug cartels are literally spilling violence across the borders over here. We've got a whole Mexican populace here in America illegally. This is a recipe for disaster, folks. All right, I mean, you know, do you understand that this is a black market that needs to be fought on a different front? Anytime you create a black market in any situation, the more and more you clamp down on it, the more and more you make it illegal, the, the, the higher the price is going to be. The higher the damn price is. And the higher the price is, the more money somebody is going to make. Somebody's going to make it, folks. That's what all drug dealers say. If you go and ask a drug dealer busted, he would say, well, you know, if I didn't make the money, somebody was going to make it. And that's what it's all about, folks, the money. Why do you think the drug cartels in South America are in existence? Do you think if we legalized uh, 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 drugs in a responsible manner that I just suggested, do you think that uh, the cost the cost will go down dramatically? It would go down to a fraction of what the street value is would completely just destroy every drug infrastructure that is in existence today. Eighty percent, folks, eighty percent of the world's drugs are consumed right here in America. And, and if we don't get to the problem, which is drug use, because people are going to use drugs anyway, folks. They're going to do it no matter what. You can try to stop them. It's not going to happen. So why are we sitting here uh, building jails and building all this crap and uh, you know, trying to you know, 
bust drug dealers. And I mean, it's, it's going to be a never-ending battle, folks. There's going to be a new drug dealer every time you take down the old drug dealer. And the only way you're going to take down these drug dealers is if you take away their opportunity to profit off of drugs, folks. Believe me, I don't like drugs at all. I've, ne I've never tried any narcotics. I've never tried any of that ridiculous malarkey. But, folks, I'm seeing what it's doing to Texas here. Or I'm seeing what, what the influence of, of all the destabilization in Mexico is doing to my state. I mean, we're having a battle out here at the border. I guarantee you that we are going to have to deploy some sort of troops or National Guard or some sort of military arm down here at the border just to make sure that none of these damn drug cartels or none of the I – mean, I mean, there's a whole crux of things that can happen, folks. Uh, drug car cartels could spill violence across the border, which has already been happening, or it could get so uh, hysterical and nuts and, and, and just destabilized out there in Mexico that you're going to have uh, just a humongous influx of refugees coming across the border. You know, I just think it's a, they're just a horrific, bad situation. This is a recipe for disaster, folks. And if you don't want to see it, you don't want to admit it, folks, well, then, by God, you don't really care about the, the, the preserving the sovereignty of this country. And I'm not just being that, I'm not just saying that to be some asshole, with all due respect. I'm saying that because I, I, I want you to start realizing that we need to start talking about these serious issues that are affecting our country right now. I mean, do I want young kids doing drugs? Absolutely not. But do I want drug dealers to continue to make, you know, five, six thousand dollars a night because we have a black market that encourages this type of black market sales? I don't think so. Uh, anyway, six four six six five two four eight six nine nine seven three area code. You're on the air. Yeah, Ghost, how you doing? I think it's one thing too that you have to mention, and I I hope you do um, some exposing on these dumb traders are those who own these private prisons. Because I was told that they're down there in Washington as well lobbying for this drug stuff to, to remain, you know, because they're making money off of all of this stuff. So of I course. think those, those traders, too, ghosts, need to be exposed. Absolutely. We'll you, and, I, and, I, and I have actually uh, mentioned that on a previous show, that prisons have become a big business. I mean, if you have the uh, finances and the means to uh, build a, a prison system – you can legitimately build it or buy one that's already been pre-existing, an old one, renovate it, and go and get government funding. And lo and behold, you've got about, what is it, a 30, 32,000 an inmate. Yep. And the more inmates that the, the cops go out there and continue to bust, and most of them, I think, what is it, 80% of most crimes yep. in jail are drug offenses. Exactly. And nonviolent ones at that, go. And like you said, it all comes back to these illegal aliens and that fraudulent uh, a Mexican government. They're, they're a failed government. And, uh, you know, I don't even understand why um, Hillary wants to send helicopters down there. Let them take care of that themselves and let us work on our borders. I agree. We need to work on the borders. But what's unfortunate is that even if we neglect the situation and allow it, go, it's going to go into complete anarchy, in my opinion. Yeah. Even if we even if we do, do a little that we claim that we're going to do for the country, mm -hmm. If it goes into complete utter chaos, there's going to be an influx of damn refugees that we've never You're seen right. before in our entire lives. We already have 60 yeah. plus million, according to the latest numbers, and of course we don't have an official number because all these illegal immigrants aren't, you know, counting themselves on any census or anything of that uh -huh. nature. So we can only speculate. We've got 60 plus illegal, uh, 60 plus million illegal immigrants in this country. And if you have an influx of refugees, it's going to be United it's States to Mexico. It's going to be worse. And, and you know, and, and, and that's another thing I don't understand either, Ghost. You know, I don't understand why we don't have our troops down there or more border patrol down there. I just don't understand it, Ghost. It, it just seems to me that our, our politicians, it's almost as though they want these things to continue to happen. They want to continue to give our, our social services out to these people while other Americans suffer. And it, it's, it's unbelievable, Ghost. And that's what I've been saying all along. But unfortunately, uh, people are so anesthetized with the rock star of Obamaism 
that, you know, they don't want to believe that, you know, they're being slapped in the face. A lot of these people invested a lot of their personal integrity, a lot of themselves, and it, it, they're too far gone now to, to realize that they were goofed. So they're yeah. going to go along with it. It, it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, a lot of authoritarian situations of, of history's yeah. past. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, and what's going on here, it's, it's only really a reflection of what happened to many other governments back in history. And, you know, the books are out there for people to read, ghosts. We have your space and hair, and people still can't see the forest from the trees. They can't see deadly. All they can see is, uh, you know, the latest rodent on Paris Hilton's crotch. That's all they can see. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what's happening with Britney Spears and, you know, how Barack is smiling and how his wife is dressed. It's unbelievable, Ghost, but you have a great show. And thanks for taking my call. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your call. Uh, anyway, we've got some more callers here. we got uh, somebody from the 870 area code. You're on the air. Hello, Ghost. Yeah, what's going on? Not much, buddy. What's going on? No, nah, nothing much. Just uh, a little depressed at the state of affairs of America, but other than that, I'm not too bad. Man, I've been listening to the show, and I've been kind of upset that you guys are think that we're not doing anything against the border. No, I know, we're, I, we're not I doing a damn there. thing about it, sir. What are you talking about? Yeah, I live in Arizona. We got Kurt Warner standing on the border throwing a damn long ball. Oh, give me a break. Oh. It just get, get him off the phone. I mean, you know, this is what I'm talking about out here, folks. You know, you get uh, here we got more agitators, more liberal agitators here to sit here and throw a ruckus on a serious situation. You see, this is what these liberals are doing. I, I wouldn't be surprised if these people were paid by MoveOn.org. All right, I wouldn't be surprised if these people were paid by the DNC. I wouldn't be surprised, folks. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. But, folks, this is a serious situation out here at the border. And that's why I always bring up the border situation, because I'm at the front lines, the front lines, out here in Texas seeing what is happening here in America. And, uh, and on top of which, we should be worrying more about American citizens, true American citizens, naturalized American citizens, people that are documented American citizens. That's who we should be worried about. We shouldn't be worried about no illegal immigrants. You're in this country illegal, you piece of crap. But, you, but of course, you've got these liberals out here throwing a humanitarian spin on this garbage, trying to say, oh, they, they want all the jobs that Americans don't want. Uh, Billy, we've got five million people collecting unemployment that I guarantee would want to go out and work and want to go out and support themselves, want to go out and support their families, Meanwhile, you've got these stupid, dumb, bedwetting, long-haired, feminist, Karl Marx, Gloria Steinem, muff-diving hippies that are out here promoting the, the advancement, the progression of illegal immigrants in America over American citizens on the American citizens' dime. It makes me sick, and you people allow it to happen. You people think it's great. It makes me sick. God! God! How can you take illegal immigrants in this country when there were Americans that spilled blood for this country? I just don't understand how you can call yourself an American citizen, how you can wake up every morning, look at yourself in the mirror, and call yourself an American citizen while your country is being flushed down the proverbial tubes. The proverbial toilet. I just can't believe it, folks. And I know that I'm getting upset out here. Hold on a second. <laughs> I know that I'm getting upset out here. I know that I'm breathing hard. My voice box is half torn. But you know what, folks? I don't care. I don't care. I don't care that I'm sitting here and probably, you know, putting myself that much closer to a damn coronary. All right? I don't care. I care about this country. I care about the Constitution. I care about what is going to happen here in America. That's what I care about. 
And it seems to me that people don't give a crap about their own country. I mean, they're actually entertaining the notion of, you know, worshiping an idol of Karl Marx every morning. And, and this is not a joke, folks. This is America, the land of the free, the home of the brave. Remember that? Where we pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's, that's what we do, folks, and nobody's happy. And why is nobody happy? And just like I have alluded to in previous shows, the majority of America, the majority of America screwed up. They messed up, folks. They shitted out too many children that they couldn't afford to maintain, uh, or they, you know, maxed themselves out when it comes to their credit lines. You know, once again, they financed uh, $250,000 homes on $25,000 a year incomes. They went out and got out $4,000 plasma screen TVs, $3,000 pots and pans, uh, you know, financed leather couches, you know, went out there and, you know, trying to live extravagant, trying to, you know, live the, in the power of suggestion image that is projected in liberal and feminist Hollywood. That's what people were doing. And when they lost their jobs, when they lost their means of, of maintaining sustenance, because most of these people have to make five to 6000 a month. I'm serious. I had a woman... Uh, tell me uh, a couple of weeks back that, oh, I got to make at least 66 hundred a month. I got to do it. Or I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose my car. I'm going to... Give me a break. <laughs> Let me tell you something, folks. If you are losing your ass tough titty, with all due respect, all right, I mean, you should have known better. You should have had a rainy day fund, a nest egg, an investment, a business, uh, something. You know, you should have had something, with all due respect, folks. If you're hurting in this day and age, it's because of your financial irresponsibility. Now, do I hold compassion to those that are losing their jobs because of this ridiculous economic downturn? You're absolutely right. I feel most compassion to the true American, the real American, the person that just wanted to raise their family. They paid their taxes, never collected an entitlement in their life. I'm talking about those Americans. Those are the people that are getting the shaft in this country. All the screw-ups in America are getting pussy-pampered by our entitlement system, by our people. You know, if you happen to be a screw-up in America, everybody will be right there ready to, you know, wipe your ass and put a diaper on it. All right? I mean, I'm, I'm serious. If you're a drug addict, oh, he's a drug addict. Let's go ahead and put him in a government-funded uh, 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 little 12-step program. If you shit it out about five or six kids from five or six different fathers. Oh, if you shit it out about five or six kids from five or six different fathers, let's go ahead and give her $5,000 a month. I mean, this is what it is, folks. This is what it is. And, uh, you know, i got a couple of veterans in here saying that they're, uh, uh, that, that, they're, that they're getting the shaft. And let me tell you something. The veterans in America are not only getting the shaft. They're getting sh shitted on, and I hate to be so vulgar about it, but the veterans are getting shitted on, and it's just a disgrace. You know, we're sitting here, and I challenge you folks, go to your nearest search engine and look up government grants and see how many government grants are available to illegal immigrants or people in the international community who want to become American citizens. I mean, you'll be sick. You'll be disgusted. But what are you going to do, folks? I mean, I can only come up on here and scream so much. I can only come up on here and conduct so many broadcasts before I finally get jaded. I just finally say, you know what, I've, I've had enough. This is just enough here. Anyway, folks, 646-652-4869-1111, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. You hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, buddy. I get tired of these damn ass clowns coming up on here. I'm a veteran from the war, from Vietnam. All right. You sound. Were you were you a drummer boy? 
No, I wasn't a damn drummer boy. I you, probably... you, you, sound, you sound a little young and a little fruity to be somebody from Nam, with all due respect. What, a, well, what unit were you in? I was probably knee deep in a rice paddy while you and your dad were sitting safe. Yeah, side get, get this idiot off. I, I could tell that that was some fruity ass liberal long hair who's probably playing for the pink team, who's probably worshiping a picture of, uh, of, of Gloria Steinem's muff somewhere. Get out of here. But you see, this is the kind of crap that you get, folks, when you're a true conservative like myself, when you're conveying truth, when you're conveying patriotism, when you're conveying ideas that are preserving the Constitution and the American way, these authoritarian liberals, these authoritarian communists, these pieces of, uh, of liberal and feminist crap are going to do whatever it takes to deviate the whole conversation, to deviate the debate, to agitate situations. They have no solutions. They they just provide problems. They just provide problems. That's why every leftist idea throughout history, through, throughout the, 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 the span of political ideology, if you look at anything on the liberal spectrum and on the liberal political spectrum, it's all built on struggle. That's right. They want to continue to put problems on the people so the people can continue to struggle so they can uh, you know, implement more authoritarian on their asses. And I'm not going to let them do it, folks. I'm not going to let them do it. That's why I conduct these broadcasts. That's why I extend my hand to you and, and, and tell you, please, folks, spread the word about True Conservative Radio. Email these shows to everybody you know. Everybody you know. All right? Go out there to the chat rooms, the blogs, the forums. Let everybody know about this program, folks, because we need to have these discussions. We need to talk about preserving America. We don't need a bunch of talking heads who are just sitting here paying you lip service. You know, these morons that are out here trying to claim to be mouthpieces to certain political philosophies or ideologies. We don't need those pieces of crap. All right, what we need is we need commentary out here that is going to somehow inform the people, somehow inspire the people to go out and participate in their government. That's all it takes, folks. That's all it takes is you. You will go out there and do something. Get political, damn it, and get political for the right reasons. Don't get political because you get anesthetized with some candidate because he's got nice teeth. He's got a nice smile. He looks presidential. He's a maverick. None of that crap. You need to look at the record. You need to look at the political philosophy. You need to look at the political ideology. That's what you need to look at, damn it. It's your responsibility. Wake up, America. Wake up. I'm calling you to wake the hell up. Don't you understand that? Your country is going down the tubes, and you don't care. You don't care about nothing but your damn fat jelly ass being fed with fast food. You don't care about nothing but watching liberal Hollywood anesthetize yourself with sexual depravity and violence. You don't care about nothing. You don't care about this country. You don't care about these freedoms that we preserve and that we cherish. You don't care about your children. That's right, I said it. You don't care about your damn children. You pick the... You don't care about your damn children! Because if you did, folks, you wouldn't be doing this crap. You wouldn't be standing around and allowing this crap to happen. You wouldn't be just standing around and laughing, playing with your schlong head, and just thinking that everything's just going to somehow remedy itself. That it's going to somehow, oh, it's just going to go ahead and fix itself some way. It's okay, ghost. It's not okay, damn it. It's not okay. I will not go quietly in that good night, and I will do whatever, whatever it takes to amplify my particular commentary and to let everybody know 
that this is not the America that we have come to know and love. This is not the America that we have come to know and fight for. This is not the America that we have come to know and preserve. This is a makeshift quasi-socialist experiment, folks. They're degrading the integrity of our currency. They're trying to set up a society where nobody can lose out here. There are no losers. And that's garbage, folks. It's not the way life is. And people need to face up to that fact. I know that there's a lot of people out here who made the wrong decisions in life, and a lot of those people are blaming society that, ah, oh, I was lied to. Hey, you should blame your parents. That's right. I know there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, I can't believe he's saying to blame my mommy and my daddy. Uh, Billy, if you're in a precarious situation during these times, and don't get me wrong, when I mean precarious, I mean you were one of these pompous, you know, pretentious ass clowns that were out here, you know, riding around in your little fancy cars. You were out here showing off your big two, three-story home, even though you couldn't afford it. And now that you lost your job because of the downturn in the economy, you can no longer afford to pay your monthly payments on all this malarkey that you don't own. And now that you can't pay these payments on this malarkey, well, you know, lo and behold, you fall victim to this political romance that uh, Barack Obama sold you and these liberals and these feminists sold you. They promised you everything from uh, clothes on your back to houses in the sky. And lo and behold, all they have done up to this point is provided an open raid on the American taxpaying system. And all you're there to do is play with your little pecker shaft. That's all you can do, folks, with a little crap-eating grin on your face, knowing that you just took it up the tailpipe. And that's all there is to it, folks. This is an open raid on the American taxpaying system. Every time you go out there and sweat and exert energy, I mean, you and I know how it is. I mean, sometimes when we wake up and have to go to work, we don't want to go to work. But we have to. If we have to maintain sustenance, if we have to take care of our families, we make a sacrifice and we go out there and we work. And all the money that's taken out of your check, all the money that's taken out of your check for quote-unquote taxes, that's what these pieces of garbage in Washington are spending. That's where $1.7 million to study pig odor, that's where the funding is coming from. $30 million to save a rat in San Francisco, that's where the money's coming from. So, folks, if you are complaining, if you don't like the way America is going at this point, well, by God, you have a responsibility as an American citizen to participate in this government. And how do you participate in it? It's the battle of the ballot box. You need to go out there and you need to be vocal. You need to go in front of your city government and give them a piece of your mind. You need to call your congressman and give him a piece of your mind. You need to organize, 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 folks. I can't get that across enough to you people. Organize based on an idea, based on a political philosophy. Get as many phone numbers, as many names as possible, email addresses. Get all this crap and organize, folks. And confront these politicians. Confront them and say, look, I have an organization of people within your particular district, and we all want you to vote on this particular issue this way. And if you don't, we're all going to vote you out of office, guaranteed, no doubt about it. And let me tell you, these damn politicians will shake in their boots. They will shake in their knickerbockers. I mean, their nads will go up inside of their damn intestinal cavity. They will be so scared crapless. But it takes you to make that initiative, folks. you got to do something about it. You need to get up off your fat jelly asses, and instead of watching the boob tube, go out there and talk to your neighbor. Talk to your neighborhood. Talk to your damn uh, precinct. Talk to everything that you have. Talk to everybody. Just gather the names. Gather email addresses. Gather phone numbers. Organize, damn it. <sighs> Organize, folks. I mean, I, I mean, is that so hard to ask? I mean, it is your responsibility as an American citizen, you moron. 
What do you think? American citizenship is just, you know, you can go out, you get a job, and, you know, try to bling bling like you were, you know, little Wayne or some crap? Huh? You trying to make believe that you're more serious than you actually are, that, you, that you're more important than you actually are? Folks, this is a game of Monopoly. All right? I mean, you know, to, to all you morons that think that you're living large out here and, you know, look at me, I got I got a Mercedes Benz and I got a three-story house and I got yeah, yeah. All you idiots that think that you're so great, folks, that doesn't mean diddly. It can be taken away from you like that in a snap, folks. Just ask all the dot-com millionaires that got rich during the 90s. Ask those dot-com millionaires who are now probably on the street, you know, shining shoes somewhere, selling cars, or working at a damn clean, uh, cl- a cleaner's counter or some crap. And that's what I'm, t- I'm telling you, folks. Just what you need to start realizing is the reason what our country is so great is because of the Constitution and the liberties, all right? Liberties, folks. Uh, anyway, um, once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. I want you all to add to your favorites uh, my particular website here on the Blog Talk Radio Network at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Please bookmark or add to your favorites that particular website and spread the word about true conservative radio, folks. Once again, I need your help. I mean, you know, we're not going to sit here and change America without having everybody participate in some fashion. All right, we all need to do our part out here, and that's why I come up on here, scream my head off, uh, you know, to the point where I'm about to have a damn, uh, you know, uh, plaque clog my damn arteries, and I'm going to keel over here on live broadcast. But you know what, folks? If I sit here and I croak, if I have a damn heart attack or if I have a damn stroke, maybe, just maybe, it'll spark some synapses in those thick skulls of yours while you're sitting on your fat asses not doing a damn thing while your country is being flushed down the dirty diarrhea toilet, you piece of crap. I mean, think about it. We need your help, damn it. We need your help, folks. I can't stress that any anymore. I just don't know how much I can stress that any longer. If you don't want to go out there and run for anything, well, then go out there and organize. If you don't want to do that, the very minimum, the very minimum you can do is spread the word about true conservative radio. Because I guarantee you, no matter who you listen to, folks, No matter who you listen to, there is no bigger patriot than this man right here that's talking to you. There is no other bigger patriot. I have no motive, folks. I'm not out here plastering my face all over the damn place. I'm not out here trying to make myself a big media star like, Hey, look at me, a media listener. I'm not doing that crap. I'm not doing that because all I want you to do is listen to the words, listen to the subject matters, listen to the ideology, listen to the commentary, because, folks, this is real. This is really America, and this is really happening, and you can't just stand there on the sidelines. You need to roll your roly-poly ass to the front lines. Do your patriotic duty and help America, damn it. Do it. Don't just say you're going to do it. Do it, damn it. We need your help. We need every one of you. Get off the sideline and get into the front lines. We need you, folks. Spread the word, folks. www.blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Tell everybody you know. And if they can't stay up late at midnight to listen to the conservative, uh, true conservative radio program live, well, then tell them to listen to it in the archive. Because this is important. The commentary here is important. And it's no joke. Oh, folks. Uh, yeah, I can feel my heart pumping like a damn racehorse, like a damn, like a damn rabbit. It's just... 
Let me catch my breath, folks. All right. 646-652-4869. We got 15 minutes left in the program. Uh, I'm going to run down some of the news stories that I'm seeing here right off the hot wire and uh, make a couple of comments about them because uh, we're heading down towards the end of the show. And that's what we're going to do. And, and please don't mind me panting and, and breathing hard, folks. If I, if I sit over here and keel over and have a damn heart attack, well, by God, uh, hopefully this inspires you to go out there and get off your fat ass and do something. Anyway, folks. Hold on, I'm trying to calm down here, folks. Anyway, um... Uh, off the hot wire here, I thought this was a very important story, and I, th- I thought that my v- listeners should be listening to this uh, story and having some sort of opinion about it because they're listening to me over the Internet. Well, uh, according to uh, a report here, AT&T, the nation's largest Internet service provider, will start sending warnings to its subscribers when music labels and movie studios allege that there are trafficking in pirated material, according to one of the AT&T executives. So that means, folks, that if you happen to be, uh, you know, downloading music or downloading movies that you're not supposed to, even though you're doing it within the privacy of your own home on your computer, which is your property, uh, according to AT&T, they're going to allow the uh, movie companies and they're going to allow the music industry to dictate, uh, you know, uh, your privacy. They're going to say, oh, well, you know, this person has uh, uh, downloaded a song and they didn't pay for it, and uh, they downloaded a movie and they didn't pay for it. Let me tell you something, folks. AT&T, I can't believe they're doing this. I think this is horrific. I think it's disgusting. I think that they just need to stick to their own damn business and just providing services. How about that? All right. And secondly, folks, Don't let this discourage you from going out there and participating in your digital freedom, all right? Don't let these old has-beens of of gatekeepers of entertainment and media, don't let these people dictate to you how you can use the Internet, all right? I mean, these people are scumbags. They're only pissed off because they can't make billions of dollars off of monopolizing an entertainment market. This is the new Internet age, baby! Where anybody can be a star, and anybody can do anything they want. They can, pr- they can produce any kind of content they want. They can produce any type of website they want. They can say anything they want. So don't allow these stupid music and movie studios to dictate to us, the people, what we can or can't watch, what we can or can't listen to. Go tell them to piss off. I mean, this is serious, folks. If you're not going to fight for anything, if you're one of these lazy fat asses that don't even want to try to fight for your regular freedom, why don't you fight for your Internet freedom, all right? Fight for your damn Internet freedom at at the very minimum. Because if you don't fight for your Internet freedom, what other freedom do you have left? I mean, sooner or later, you're not going to be able to have privacy in your own home. I mean, we already have those, uh, you know, see-through cameras that can see right through a a roof of a house or right through a damn wall of a house. And we're not even going to have that, folks. I mean, this is serious. Do not allow anybody to allow any kind of restriction on the Internet, any kind of regulation, nothing. Don't allow it. All right? Don't allow anything of that nature, because you start doing that, and then what else you have left? You got nothing but authoritarianism all around, not only in the real world, but in the virtual world. And how do you want to chew on that for the rest of eternity? I don't think it's a very edible little uh, uh, concoction. I like freedom. All right? I like the Constitution. That's why I am telling you folks, if you were within the sound of my voice... Obviously, you're on an Internet connection. 
and if you love your internet freedom, if you like being able to go to any site that you want to, you be able to watch anything you want to, be able to listen to anything you want to, well, then don't allow these pieces of crap to dictate to us how we use our internet freedom. Hey, movie companies, you stupid movie company bastards, hey, too bad, all right? We don't want to go out there and pay, uh, you know, $12 for a damn movie when it sucks, okay? You're going to have to work a little harder this time, okay? You're going to have to work a little harder. M music companies, all right, we don't want to go out and pay $10, $12 for a CD, and it sucks, we don't want to do that crap, okay? So that means your little artists and all the people that are in the entertainment industry, they just have to evolve with the conversion of technology, all right? They're going to have to find other methods to maintain revenues, all right? That's all there is to it. Don't try to be authoritarians and try to look into the privacy of our Internet connections. You have no right to do that. You have no right to do that crap. You, hey, you know what? Everybody in this damn uh, connection, anybody who's listening to this damn broadcast, you should be saying to yourself, give me Internet freedom or give me death. Because if you don't have Internet freedom, folks, what else do you have? Okay? I mean, they're already taking our freedoms away from us here in America. They're already wiping their dirty, diarrhea-ridden ass cracks with the Constitution. The only thing we have left is the Internet. Don't you understand it? And when you don't have an unregulated Internet, who are you going to turn to? What are you going to turn to for your information, for your news, for your commentary? Well, only the outlets that they tell you, that they want you to see. And that's garbage, folks. You need to be about freedom. You need to start caring about freedom. It seems to me that nobody gives two rats asses about it anymore. You want this crap, don't you? You want this Karl Marx worshiping crap. I bet most of you right now, every time I say the name Karl Marx, Gloria Steinem, liberal or feminist, you're sitting there tickling your ass crack like a Jolly Rancher in a damn... A uh, freaky farm movie, for heaven's sake. I can't believe that this is America. Can you? Can you believe that this is America? And you know what, folks? It doesn't matter what side of the supposed uh, American political party spectrum you turn to. It doesn't matter if you turn to the Democrats. It doesn't matter if you turn to the Republicans. It's liberalism and feminism everywhere you turn. That's why I say to all my opposition, to all my foes, to all my enemies, to all my adversaries, do not label me as a Republican. Do not label me as a Democrat. I am not a liberal. I am not a feminist. I am not a Republican. I'm a conservative, damn it! I'm a conservative! Don't you idiots ever forget that! Get that through your thick skulls! I'm a conservative, damn it! I've been one my entire life, and I will be one until the day I die. And I promise, I promise, folks. Anyway, we got seven minutes left in the program. I want to thank everybody, first off, for listening to me live here. We got a lot of live people. Thank you very much for listening to me. I don't know if I'm going to conduct a broadcast tomorrow. Stay up to date with me. And believe me, I'm on Twitter, folks. I, I have dove into the whole Twitter phenomena. So if you happen to be on Twitter, follow me, add me to your following list, or however it works. The name is Ghost Politics. All one word, folks, Ghost Politics. And uh, also, add to your favorites, add to your bookmarks, www.blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That is the official website to the True Conservative Radio Program. That's right, folks. That is the True Conservative Radio website. 
And uh, also have a blog, too, folks, if you all want to keep up to date with that. That's ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. Everything that I'm saying here can be found on my main webpage. So make sure to take a look at that. Also, folks, please, if you have uh, you know some sort of a voice comment, please leave me a voice message on the new Internet voicemail that I have there on blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. If you go down to the extras section, there's a little voice mailbox. By God, grow yourself a pair and give me a call and leave me a message. I'll put you on this show. All right? If you support the program, please support the program. Let everybody know that you're a conservative, damn it. And if you hate the show, if you're one of these ass clowns that are like, Oh, ghost, I don't like your show. I think you're a little vulgar, and I think you're politically incorrect. And yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Billy, why don't you call up and say it too? Grow yourself a pair and vocalize your supposed ideology. And you know what, folks? Uh, Like I said, the reason that I talk with passion, the reason that I talk with fury is because I mean what I say. I say what I mean. I don't talk out both sides of my mouth. And every time that you hear ghosts, On this broadcast, you're going to hear truth. You're going to hear passion. You're going to hear real commentary. I'm not going to do this for ratings, all right? All right, I've had a lot of people that used to be faithful listeners to me that are no longer listeners to me anymore because I'm not abiding by the status quo of the Republican Party or the so-called conservatives. I'm not abiding by that crap. America's about freedom. Not gang mentality. So what I say, I say from the heart, folks. I speak from the heart. You can agree or disagree with me, folks, but just know that I speak with passion. I'm not like these idiots on blog talk radio that will say one thing one week and the next week completely contradict their stupid hypocritical selves. That's not me, folks. Anyway, folks, please spread the word about true conservative radio, all right? I need your help, folks. We need to spread the word about the kind of commentary that is conducted on this broadcast. We need to start worrying about feminism and liberalism and its infestation on America. We need to start talking about the battle at the Texas border. We need to start talking about illegal immigration. We need to start talking about morality back in America. We need to start talking about this crap. You piece of crap. I'm a conservative, damn it. We need to start talking about this crap, folks. And I'm not joking. Anyway, folks, keep up to date with the show. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Bookmark it. Add it to your favorites. I uh, I broadcast between the hours of 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Central U.S. time. Monday through Friday. So make sure to check up to date. Add me on Twitter. That'll be the fastest way now to figure out if I'm going to have a show that evening or whatever. So add me on your Twitter, Ghost Politics, and uh, everything will be okay. I know that it sounds like I'm about to have a damn coronary, folks, but you know what? I don't care. Just as long as you understand that I'm as serious as a damn heart attack. I'm as serious as a damn heart attack. Anyway, I want to thank you all for uh, listening to this program once again. Uh, Please spread the word about True Conservative Radio. And please, folks, if you like the show, if you appreciate the commentary, if you listen to us, whether it's live or in the archive, please support any sponsor. Any sponsor who sponsors True Conservative Radio. So if you're at the blogtalkradio.com slash ghost site and you see some big-name sponsors that are sitting there sponsoring this program, 
Just pay him a visit. Check him out. Please, if you support the program, if you appreciate the commentary, do that, folks. Because these folks that are advertising for true conservative radio are true patriots, folks. I have gotten a lot of people that have written the Blog Talk Radio Network in favor of getting me off the air because of my anti-feminism and anti-liberalism ideology. They have gotten letters from women's groups, liberal groups. Uh, I, I've had uh, Nickelodeon and, and Disney uh, write the con- I don't even want to get into what has happened. But, folks, anybody who supports the true conservative radio program in a sponsorship, by God, go and visit them because they are a true patriotic com- uh, company because – this uh, uh, show is not a secret, and everybody knows that I'm a damn conservative, and I'm going to tell it how it is, and I believe in America, I believe in the Constitution, and if you're a true patriot, well, by God, go visit those sponsors who sponsor true conservative radio, because let me tell you something, it takes a lot of cojones to sponsor this show. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Until next time, folks, long live the conservative movement and death to feminism. A Napa guy knows the only way you'd give a freshly minted driver a brand new car is if he promises to never drive it. Instead, let him grind the gears and knock over the neighbor's mailbox in something a little more suited to his skill level. And with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, he can safely drive something that's nearly as old as he is. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for him. That's Napa know-how.